Hello again. I'm Dustin Kirkland, and I'm here with Maya Kaczorowski. She is the security product manager for containers at, uh, right. at Google. And we're going to talk a bit about the security angle here at KubeCon. And I think she's got a pretty exciting announcement from earlier today. Yeah, that's right. So uh, Google Kubernetes Engine information about uh, clusters are now included in the Cloud Security Command Center. The Cloud Security Command Center is our single pane of glass for figuring out what's happening in your projects from a security point of view. Think about it as security monitoring rather than, say, application monitoring. And now you can see what's happening for those GKE clusters right in uh, Cloud CSCC. What's really exciting about that also is that we have five uh, container security partner integrations natively in GKE in Cloud Security Command Center. Can you name all five? Yes. Okay. Uh, Aqua Security, Capsulate, uh, StackRox, Cystic Secure, and TwistLock all can now write their, their findings directly to the Cloud Security Command Center for uh, what you're running in GKE. Now, is that runtime or is that uh, at build or developer time? What's the? Sure. So we think about container security at Google in three different aspects. One is what we'll call uh, making sure your containers are secure to develop. Okay. So do I have uh, some way of managing my network policies and secrets and, and uh, different kinds of deployment policies, identities, et cetera, that I need to have? The second area is uh, what we'll call build and deploy security. Okay. So how do you know that your images are vulnerability free, don't mm. contain ODAs, right. uh, that they've gone through your CI CD pipeline before they're deployed to production? Right. Uh, the main thing that we have in that space right now is something called Grafeus. It's an open source project. There's okay. a couple talks actually at KubeCon on Grafeus by the TL of that project, okay. uh, Wendy. Okay. And uh, that allows you to track the metadata of your projects, including vulnerability scan results for those images, so you can then determine whether or not you can de deploy those images. Kubernetes at large, it seems like there's a lot of work that's gone into more secure images without zero days. It seems like something that we've really got to get on top of, right? It's, it's certainly an area where there's a lot of low-hanging fruit, and yeah. there's a lot of uh, customer and, and partner interest in that space. Right. Um, the, the, main, the main problem to solve in that space right now is just the sheer volume of vulnerabilities that people have. Mm. So I've had customers ask me, how do I, you know, what do I do if I find a vulnerability that doesn't have a patch that exists yet? And the reality is, you're probably not, you're, you're thinking too far ahead. Right. You probably have a ton of vulnerabilities that are completely unpatched. Right. Fix those first before you start to, right. to, to worry about things that are unpatchable. So is the best advice we have to give is rely on the operating systems vendors to provide those updates and just make sure that those updates are as, uh, as installed as possible in all of your base images? So you're thinking of actually a different layer than what I'm thinking of. Okay. So um, you can talk about the, the, the Node OS and the Container OS. Okay. And Google uses, um, we use Container Optimized OS as the Node OS, which right. is open source, it's based on Chromium OS. Right. And we um, have a great blog post as to why we think that's, that's built in a really secure way. Uh, and then you can use the, uh, the, op the container OS, and we have lots of options, again, on Google, or you can bring your own. Right. Um, and then we have the image itself that you're deploying, and that might itself have vulnerabilities. Right. So if you're running Nginx, but you're running, or, or WordPress, and that's a two-year-old two you know, image, right. maybe you want to patch that before you deploy it. Right. Maybe you want to check the age of your images. Maybe you want to run some standard scans, et cetera, before you deploy that. And which of those is the user's responsibility versus Google takes care of on your behalf? Sure. If you're using a, uh, a Node OS or a container OS that's provided by Google, okay. it's Google's responsibility to patch it, but it's your responsibility to pick what you want. Okay. Right? So if the user picks, and correct. then Google handles the patching of the base OS as a managed service effectively. If they pick an OS that we provide. Okay. So if you, if you choose to bring your own oh. container OS, it's then it's your responsibility, okay. obviously. The image OS is your responsibility to, 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 sorry, the image itself is your responsibility to secure. Okay. But this single pane of glass now should maybe help users a bit more? Ah, so that's the third area. Ah. So that's our container runtime security area, which is I have a container now running in production, uh, and I've done everything I can to, you know, fiddle with all the, the things in GKE and, and um, scan my images before they're deployed. Mm -hmm. But what if, what if there still is an O-Day? And what if somebody gets into my container and starts mm -hmm. doing something bad? How do I detect that, react, do forensics after the fact, et cetera? Yeah. And that's container runtime security. Okay. And that's a super nascent space, an area we, we realize there's a lot of interest in, hence uh, the integrations of five partners with, with the Cloud Security Command Center. Right. And are, are any of these helping us with forensics? I'm guessing that's snapshotting the container, knowing what it looked like at various points in time, uh, maybe being able to roll back debug logs or monitoring logs and, uh, I don't know, trace the origination of the attack? That's a still fairly new okay. um, capability. Um, Wishful a lot of the, thinking, right? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the partners have, have, have tooling around uh, 
a longer set of logs. Okay. So you might have logs that are written temporarily to like a ring buffer, for example. Right. And then once you detect an incident, you flag those logs and start writing those. Right. Um, it's not necessarily like full image snapshotting uh, right. that's happening yet. That's where we're at today. Um, so we covered the, the three different areas. Um, I'm curious if there are kinds of attacks that you'd like to maybe highlight, the types of things that uh, either developers should be aware of when writing an application or IT administrators should be aware of as they're operating clusters. Yeah, I mean, it's in some sense, it's kind of boring for a security professional. It's not that different than what you see as attacking a VM, right? You're going to see uh, credential theft, privilege escalation. Mm -hmm. You might see uh, abuse of, of compute. In this case, crypto mining is a fairly popular thing to do. Yeah. Um, they're, they're not new kinds of attacks, and often people are actually not aware that they're in a container when they're doing the attacks. They're not mm. attacking Kubernetes per se, right. they're just attacking Whatever some open is. compute thing, yeah. and oh, I happen to be in a container. Like, yeah. that's great. Indeed. Interesting. Uh, so different question, moving away from security a little bit. Um, just looking at the community, the, the at-large community in, around Kubernetes, are there Maybe any people, individuals in the community that you'd like to recognize as someone who inspires you, has maybe helped you out or helped out the, the project in the uh, in the last few months. Yeah, I think we're we're really fortunate in security. Everyone who's involved in in Sigoth is really uh, a stellar, stellar yeah. individual. Um, I'd like to call out like Eric Chiang from Red Hat Core West. Uh, he's he's been really great at doing a lot of the IAM RBAC type work hmm. in in Kubernetes. Um, if you want a good description of RBAC, go talk to Eric. <laughs> he will explain it to you <laughs> I was in just about to ask you. <laughs> 30 seconds or an hour long, depending on what you like, and, and what he does or doesn't like about RBAC. Um, Eric's also been leading a lot of the, the thought leadership in SIGOTH, so that's, he's been really great to have, to have him involved. Yeah, that's great. Uh, then finally, finally, one last question. Uh, can you tell us, people are super interested, how you got into Kubernetes? What was your introduction to Kubernetes? People, people are not super interested. Oh, no, they're very, very um, interested. I'm a very pragmatic person. I worked in security for a while, and I wanted to work on something that I thought was going to 10x in the next five years. Uh -huh. Containers are going to 10x in yep. the next five years. There will be security problems. There you go. We can job ideally, security. I, well, and also job security. <laughs> and ideally, we can prevent those security problems before they happen. All right. Well, good. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.